Today we will talk about the Siemens PLCs. We do have uh, SMN 200, 300, 400, 1200, and 1500 PLC. And as I told you, like for programming a PLC, we need to have a software. So the software that we use for SMN 200 PLC programming is a MicroWin, and the software that we use for SMN 300 and 400 PLCs programming that's Matic Manager. Then there comes a tier portal that's used for SMN 1200 and 1500 PLCs programming. And also with that, like before we have, if we have to, you know, like uh, program an HMI, we normally use WinCC, Flexible, or we do have different softwares for HMI programming. So uh, now the TIA actually is specialized for 1200 and 1500. But it doesn't mean like uh, TIA cannot program uh, 200 and 300 and 400. Like in Semantic Manager, you can only program 300 and 400. You cannot program 200 or 1200 or 1500 in Semantic Manager. So um, this TIA, Totally Integrated Automation Portal, that software brings a change in a way like you can program 200 PLC, 300, 400, 1200, 1500 all in one that software. Also with that you can program uh, HMIs, you can program touch panels and etc on that. So this is a TIA portal and that's what we are going to cover in this particular course here because uh, it will cover how to program a 7, 300, 400 PLC, it will cover 1200 and 1500. So without wasting any time, uh, we will move ahead with that particular software. So it's the time to start working with TIA Portal software. So I have already installed software TIA Portal. I will just click in this one and it will take a while and then the software will be open for us to program. So TIA Portal is the software that we use to program PLCs from the Siemens and also HMIs you can program by using the same software then you can like now I'm gonna create a project here so I will just cl uh, create new one project any name you can name it based on whatever is requirement so you, you will just create here and then this program will be created there and then we can add which PLC CPU we have like whatever the hardware we do have in in uh, real that's the same hardware we need to add in there so then to add the CPU or to add which CPU we have uh, from Siemens PLCs so I will just click on there click here add new device and here is the place where we have uh, PC systems we do have a 7 1200 300 400 and 200 PLCs we can use that but for now we are just going to select a 7 300 PLC let's suppose that we do have a CPU 312 with order number this one so I just selected it and just double click and now the program interface to program that particular CPU so that will be open up and we can start working on programming side of it so uh, it's quite heavy software it normally takes a while so don't need to be panic on that side here we go we have already opened the software now is the time to start working with the program blocks I will just go ahead and click this one. One by one you will get to know about each and everything here but for now just focus on those areas that I'm talking about here. So uh, normally open contact what is that and normally close contact what is that? Normally open contact is like in normal condition when we don't have any input like it's for sure used for digital inputs like for example on and off control uh, switch 
for example we are taking an input from switch and we do have some status signals of motors and all that so that's what we there we, where we use a contact it it's going to be um, possibly normally open and normally close normally open uh, means that in normal condition when we don't have any signal coming from the field this uh, circuit is open and we don't have a you know uh, the current passing through it so uh, the idea is like for example if we just put in here you will understand normally open so here we go so we have uh, just clicked here and then this normally open contact is already there I 0.0 now you might be thinking what is going on what is I 0.0 let me teach you very well on that side here we go so we 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 were talking about PLC so we, we we are also talking about the PLC memories so we were talking about system memory as when we address this memory we were talking about the memory that we use for addressing in a PLC addressing in a PLC is a system memory right so let's talk about that now in system memory we do have uh, this kind of arrangement like we have a uh, bits from 0 to 7 uh, and then a byte number of 0 up to whatever you like so this is how the memory is arranged there so if you talk about I 0.0 that will be input 0, 0.0 0 is this one and the first 0 is to that's indicating byte 0 so and the second 0 is talking about the bit value that's a, that's a, the first one right here so when we talk about 3.7 for for instance so that will be this is byte that's 3 and 7 is this one so 3.7 is where is there this this particular value here that's going to be stored here so th we we can say 3.7 this one i 0, 0.0 this i one uh, sorry uh, i 0 0.1 up to i 0 0.7 and then i 1 so, so uh, the byte is increment here and i 1.0 up to i 1.7 here and then after 1.7 then 2.0 up to 2.7 that's how it's it goes on that's how the plc arranges uh, values in the P, in its memory so when we talk about a byte for instance we are talking about whole byte then we are gonna use byte 0 only so I B 0 that mean like we are talking about whole entire byte so if we talking about word word is normally a, a you can say it's a 16 bit so that's the reason when we talk about IW 0 that mean uh, we are talking about this whole 16 bit starting from this ending up the here so this whole two uh, you can say rows f at the first if we in, if we say I W0 that contains both of the rows so that's how you define I W0 so when we talk about I D that's for double word so that's I D0 for instance is to define a double word and double word contains how many bytes four bytes so first four bytes from 0 to 1 is going to be for that so when we are defining addressing a so the memory that we use is called a system memory that's need to be very clear if you have still confusion on that reach me out on like on the comment section I will try to explain you more so that's what we we talk about system memory so now you understand I 0.0 what is that it's for input so when we define output we will be using same memory but for output we have Q Q is for output so I will say Q 0.0 here we go so we are done on that side and because we are talking about the digital stuff so that's why I 0.0 that shows uh, input 0, 0.0 and Q 0, 0.0 is for output that's Q 0, 0.0 
so here we use normally open contact so this is output q0.0 .0, and that's that's uh, that's something that if in the case you this particular assignment you're gonna use here so that is used for output indication so you, you take an input and you're assuming that whenever we have input we have output like for example take an example of light when you press a button light is on and when we uh, we remove like for example we turn it off it is go is going to off, uh, to be off so that's the concept that we are going to use by a, uh, like we we will we will be programming that same concept by using a plc software and we will we will see how it's going on so let's see we'll go to the program blocks make sure you are there and then start simulation as we don't have our hardware, real hardware at the moment, that's why this the time use uh, this simulator. So this simulator is gonna give us the same kind of uh, like uh, you can say environment where we can practice all what we need to learn. So we we got a simulator on for that reason. So simulator is already there. We just need to a little down so that we can do whatever we like this is in stop mode so one moment it looked like program is now it's it's gonna be downloaded hold on a second I will not download it by this way I will download it like this uh, so we have uh, this program already in front of us where we are taking like whenever we have input high output will be high so let's start actually simulating that in order to simulate that we have to click in on this man button uh, we have to first download it and this is actually going to download into the simulator as I told you like simulator is acting as a real PLC on back end like we can download a simulator and we can test on let's start doing that now we can run it from here uh, this is i0.0 .0. this is one up to i0.7 and this is q0.0 up to q0.7 so as i told you ib0 whole byte you can see here and you can give it a value by bits by bits or you can give it value by byte you can see here you, there is a selection binary decimal you can change that but for now because we are just playing with the digital stuff so that's the reason I'm trying to simulate it here so let's do it now by this way so I will just uh, simulate it in order to see uh, input this is input when I press input this Q0.0 .0 will be also high you'll see that is we here we go like when you remove it Output is gone, but this is normally open contact, and that's how we use normally open contact, and that's how we write a very basic, very very basic program in a PLC software. So stop that, and let's do another thing. Uh, if instead of this one, I if I use this normally close contact instead of normally open what is going to be difference here normally close as is indicating in normal condition when we don't have input we will get an output so let's see it's a quite you can see it's a reverse of what we are doing in okay ma'am let me download it first here we go it's the time to download it here we go so the program is already downloaded to simulator when I will run it, you will see we don't have input, but output is there. So once we will have input, output will go off. So that's how we we actually use this particular normally open and normally close contact here. So hope you are liking that. In next video, we will we will actually try to simulate. And there is one thing that left for today's session. I will just tell you to utilize this this glasses sign here. It's very nice to use that let's see uh, I'm gonna use it now you can see when we don't have input we got an output here we got an output here so when we press in the input here the at the same time output goes off so that's the 
normally open and normally close contact. In normally close contact, in normal condition, the circuit is closed and then we are getting an output. So in next session, we will try to try to actually uh, make the next programs on NNR logic. Thank you very much for watching this video. If you like it, hit the like button and don't forget to subscribe this channel. For subscribing, all you have to do is you have to come on this subscribe button right over here. Click on that and you are not done yet because you have to put on notification here. Send me all notification for this channel and then save. By this way, you will not miss any video from IT and Automation Academy. That's all. Wish join in that. Thank you very much. Bye.